बहूनी मे वयति तानी जन्मानि तव चार्जुना तान्य अहम वेद सर्वाणी न त्वम वेत परंतप नमस्ते टू ऑल दिस इज अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल श्रीमद् भगवत गीता श्लोक वेयर वी कैन क्लियरली अंडरस्टैंड दैट श्री कृष्ण वाज अ ह्यूमन बीइंग नॉट ऑलमाइटी गॉड एंड ऑफ कोर्स पीपल हु आर कृष्ण प्रेमी लवर्स ऑफ श्री कृष्णा एज ऑलमेटी गॉड दे विल इमीडिएटली कमेंट टू मी दैट यू नो प्लीज गो एंड रीड दिस चैप्टर लेवंथ चैप्टर टेंथ चैप्टर सेवंथ चैप्टर दिस श्लोका नंबर वेयर श्री कृष्ण सेज हिमसेल्फ टू बी ऑलमेटी गॉड वॉट डू यू वॉन्ट टू आई मीन हाउ डू यू वॉन्ट टू आर्ग्यू सो आई हैव क्लैरिफाइड सो मेनी श्लोकास इन माई चैनल प्लीज गो थ्रू माई प्ले लिस्ट भगवद गीता वेयर आई हैव क्लैरिफाइड वेन अ योगी अटेन्स अ समाधि वॉट विल बी द स्टेट एंड देन हाउ समाइम्स ही स्पीक्स इन समाधि but this shloka is an undeniable fact that shri krishna took birth and death shri krishna went through birth and death cycle because shri krishna himself says me myself and arjuna yourself we have gone through bahuni janmani we have gone through several janmas i have taken birth several times similarly you have taken birth several times that means i have taken birth and death and birth and death again and again the only difference between you and me arjuna is tani sarvani aham veda tani sarvani all those births i am aware whereas tvam na veta you do not know what your previous births i know i know how many births i have taken before attaining samadhi in this birth i have attained samadhi i have realized almighty god because we all must know if you do not know we all must know shri krishna maharaj studied vedas under the lotus feet of sandipan maharishi and also other i think angira angira rishi also he studied so shri krishna maharaj understood vedas from rishi munis after understanding vedas after doing tapasya intense ashtanga yoga tapasya shri krishna maharaj attained samadhi that's why he is called as bhagavan or yogeshwar in mahabharata bhagavan does not mean almighty god in this context when you are addressing a human being as bhagavan that that human being is a samadhisthi yogi yogeshwar bhag datu bhag means aishwaryavan one who is possessing the aishwarya wealth of yoga is called as bhagavan so i was reading one of the famous famous bhagavad gita in that bhagavad gita the commentator has mentioned i i don't want to tell the name because unnecessarily why should you tell the names of other authors who are not you know vedic scholars but he has written like this for this shloka he has written in the vedas also it is said that lord although one without a second nevertheless manifest himself in innumerable forms so this one statement by that author very clearly clarifies that he has zero knowledge about vedas i know what mantra he is translating he is translating purusha sukta purusha sukta mantra i have made separate video on this mantra the mantra is प्रजापतिश्चरती गर्भे अंतर जायमानो बहुधा विजायते दे ट्रांसलेट दिस मंत्र आयास बहुधा विजायते प्रजापति ऑल मैटी गॉड बिकेम इन्यूमरेबल फॉर्म इन इन्यूमरेबल फॉर्म्स बट वेर एज दिस मंत्र मीनिंग इज नॉट एट ऑल दिस प्रजापतिश्चरती गर्भे अंतर अजायमानो बहुधा विजा विजायते दिस जेंटलमैन एज ट्रांसलेटेड दट नेवर द लेस मैनिफेस्ट हिमसेल्फ इन इन्यूमरेबल फॉर्म्स and so he is trying to say that see shri krishna also takes avatar he also took avatar and he died he again takes avatar and he dies he again takes avatar and he dies but he is almighty god arjuna is a normal person that is what he has written which is absolutely false because vedas very clearly says that almighty god can never come into human form vedas very clearly says sapriya god shukram akayam god does not have a body God does not have nervous system. Ajay ek path. God is ek path, ek ras wala. He is unchangeable. And Ajay means never coming into birth. Jivatma comes into birth. In fact, Jivatma comes into birth even after attaining moksha when the moksha time is over. I made several separate video on this also. On what is the first birth? Like you know how the first birth or how do we understand the first birth? Please go through my channel properly. So. Sri Krishna took birth he himself says that i have taken several births but i know because of my samadhi because of my realization i know what i was in the previous births bahuni janmani so this is a very clear authority to understand that sri krishna was a jeevatma normal human being 
of course normal human being means only in the sense of jivatma i am saying he is not a normal human being he is a yogeshwar great samadhist yogi whereas arjun at that point of time when this geeta shloka was written at that point of time arjun was not a samadhist yogi maybe arjun had got samadhi after the next birth or we do not know but at that point of time at least when shri krishna gave this knowledge or when vyasmuni wrote this knowledge in mahabharata arjuna was a jivatma normal person like us maybe much much better than us because arjuna was a tapasvi as we can understand from these shlokas but he was a normal jivatma maybe he was doing tapasya he was doing sadhana but shri krishna was a yogi at that point of time so this kind of bhagavad gita translations we must try to avoid to read because this is a human translation a person who is telling that in the vedas it is said that almighty god will manifest himself in innumerable forms that person cannot know abc of vedas he does not have any knowledge of the vedas many people argue to me that you know this book is the world famous bhagavad gita book he is a great philosopher of vedas how do you say he is a great philosopher of vedas when such a person writes this kind of statement which is against vedas so that's why i always recommend please read the bhagavad gita which is written by a samadhist yogi who is a realized jivatma who has realized vedas in samadhi that gentleman that yogeshwar only can clearly explain each and every word in every shloka in this shloka my acharya has explained two ved mantras rigveda 1 by 66 by 1 and 1 by 23 by 24 to give a proof that yogis can have insight to the previous janma god says see 1 by 23 by 24 maharishi dayanand saraswati says in the commentary he says yada jeevah purva shariram tyakta uttaram prapnoti tada tena sah yah swabhaviko manaso agnir gachati sa eva punah sharir adikam prakashayati jeevanam yat papam punyam cha janma karanam asti tad rishi sahita vidwanso jananti netare very big sentence but netare vidwan jananti netare what vidwan means rishi and vidwan yogi tapasvi they know what they know they know the exactly the previous janmas punyam cha janma karanam asti janma karanam why i took birth in this human form because of my previous janma so janma karanam i am taking birth in this body because of my previous janma so only rishi muni knows the janma karanam of jeevatma netara means nobody else will know so this is a proof this is rigveda 1 by 23 by 24 i think yeah 1 by 23 by 24 and here almighty god also clarifies that <coughs> what happens when somebody dies yada jeevah purva shariram taktva when when somebody dies when the when the previous in the previous birth or in this birth if somebody dies the jeevatma will travel to the next birth and along with the jeevatma the anthe karana the his vrittis his mind also travels and it gets it gets manifestation in the next birth because and based on his own sanskars he will get the next birth and this next birth getting the next birth is based on his previous janma papa punya karmani and that is known only to the rishi muni so even if i say that i know i have taken birth because of my previous karma deeds i really do not know i know because i have been told by my acharya have i realized it no i have not realized it but sri krishna has realized it my acharya has realized it maharishi dhanan saraswati has realized it all the rishi munis have realized it vyasmuni has realized it and where is the proof of that the proof is in vedas because if somebody is writing a statement like i told that in vedas it is told that god will take many forms vedas it is not told that is his own interpretation of the vedas he i know what mantra he is speaking about purusha sukta 31 by 19 31 by 19 i made two videos separately please go through my channel in the i think in the playlist common misconception and in the playlist vedas you can find this explanation ajurveda 31 by 19 purusha sukta is god is manifesting as many so we must understand shrimad bhagavad gita from the light of the veda so this is one mantra which clarifies that only rishi munis knows their previous janmas and the same thing the same concept 
the same philosophy the same knowledge is told by yogeshwar sri krishna here and one more mantra my acharya explains in his book is 1 by 66 by 1 of rigveda where maharishi also has beautifully explained in sanskrit vidwan so jigyasun prati vartaman janmanam praag janmanancha sanchitani nimitt jnanam karyam drishtavo upadeshe yuhu that means almighty god says in this mantra that a vidwan a yogi a acharya before advising to the disciple before giving vedic upadesh to the disciple let him see the other the disciple's previous janma let him see in samadhi suppose i am going to my acharya my acharya is a samadhi yogi before advising my acharya before giving me the diksha before giving me the knowledge of the vedas my acharya must see my previous janma what i was in the previous janma whether am i eligible to get this knowledge and further almighty god clarifies not only previous janma but also this janma vartaman previous see sometimes what happens is i could have been a very worst person in the previous janma but this janma i am a jigyasu when i took birth i have gone through several you know hardships and i have transformed myself to be a jigyasu i do not want anything else other than almighty god of course i have done various pap karmas in the previous janmas but this janma i am a jigyasu this janma i have ultimate love and respect to vedas and Al- almighty god and acharya so acharya will see my previous janma and this janma and then he decides he must decide to give the knowledge upadesham drishtuvo drishtuvo means after realizing the previous janma of the disciple let the acharya give the upadesh of the vedas so this also proves that this same statement of sri krishna where sri krishna says i know my previous janma i know your janma also but you do not know your janma so this is a power given by almighty god as a siddhi to rishi munis to abuse anybody's previous janma so this is very very important for us to understand that sri krishna or vyas muni has written this shloka vyas muni has written it sri krishna probably would have spoken this shloka based on the knowledge of the vedas based on the authority of the vedas otherwise anybody can say i am almighty god even when you read bible or other books in in quran allah says i am almighty god in bible jesus says i am almighty god in geeta sri krishna says i am almighty god then all the three must be true or all the three must be false so how do we prove it prove through the vedas if veda says that a human being can be almighty god if veda says that any other power can become almighty god then all the three are right but vedas deny it vedas say that i do not send any other books other than vedas and vedas are not books so definitely a description of almighty god in a book which is written by or so called book which we understand which we assume that this is from almighty god cannot be almighty god and similarly a human being cannot be almighty god because god says i do not take birth god says i am giving power to the acharyas to see the previous births and then give upadesh and god says i manifest in self myself inside the heart of a rishi to give the knowledge of the vedas to the public so go to acharyas to listen the my knowledge so with various vedic proof only we can come to the conclusion that sri krishna cannot be almighty god sri krishna is a human being but he is a greatest yogeshwar and because he is a yogi he can he can say that i know my previous birth you do not know arjuna and because sri krishna knows his previous birth we can come to the conclusion that he is a vidwan he is a rishi based on this ved mantra only so please understand always geeta cannot be interpreted without vedas if you want to interpret geeta without vedas you will do it only for your selfish reasons like many people do not accept my videos because of their selfish reasons because they want to believe what they believe is the truth and they don't want to believe what veda says is the truth so this is the difference between a common geeta and the geeta written by a yogeshwar my acharya is a param yogeshwar and my acharya has beautifully explained but you know when you read the, he has explained three pages for this but when you read this it's not easy to understand at one glance you must go through very carefully very very carefully then you can try to link aha okay so this is this is the linkage between sri krishna and vedas and acharyas and 
समाधि योगी सो लेट अस ऑलवेज ट्राई टू गिव रेस्पेक्ट टू श्री कृष्णा एज ए योगी एंड ट्राई टू रेस्ट्रेन आवर सेल्फ फ्रॉम वर्शिपिंग श्री कृष्णा एज ऑलमेटी गॉड बिकॉज वर्शिपिंग श्री कृष्णा एज ऑलमेटी गॉड इज ग्रेटेस्ट इंसल्ट टू श्री कृष्णा एंड ऑलमेटी गॉड I want to remember Sri Krishna every day. I am keeping his photo in my room. Is it okay? Yeah, it is okay. But you are remembering Sri Krishna as Almighty God is not okay. If you if you have Sri Krishna's photo in your house and you remember that oh Sri Krishna is okay morning four o'clock you get up or five o'clock you get up or sometimes six o'clock you get up you have a photo of Sri Krishna in your room. And then the moment you see it, you must remember Sri Krishna used to get up at twelve o'clock in the midnight. I am getting up at six o'clock. shameful i am a shameful disciple i mean i am very shameful so we we must say to sri krishna that sri krishna you are a great tapasvi let me also try to follow your footsteps so slowly try to improvise your you know wake waking up schedule and then when you once you start waking up at 4 o'clock 4:30 then remember sri krishna that okay he is still 3 hours 3 and a half hours ahead of me how can i become like sri krishna you can become like sri krishna when you follow Sri Krishna's footsteps of Vedas. Sri Krishna followed Vedas all along his life. Why not we also follow? Instead of following that, we want shortcut. We cannot. We say no, no, no. I cannot become. I cannot wake up at three o'clock, four o'clock. Let me enjoy my life and let me say Krishna, Krishna, Rama, Rama. This is absolutely insult to Sri Krishna. This is absolutely insult to Almighty God. This is absolutely insult to the Vedic Sanatan Dharma. So if you are a proud Sanatan Dharmi. have guts to say that sri krishna was a yogeshwar if you are a proud sanatan dharmi in reality people always come to my channel especially in the geeta you know in the geeta videos they come to my channel they spit on my face they talk bad about me and the more bad about my acharya which is absolutely unacceptable from the eyes of almighty god speaking bad about me nothing will happen speaking bad about an acharya who is a samadhist yogi speaking bad about maharishi dhanu sarasvati your life will get totally ruined i can guarantee you so never comment bad about yogeshwars and never worship sri krishna as almighty god because he was not almighty god and this shloka is the greatest proof for that thank you so much namaste om